What's up guys, Riften Gaming here with another Diablo 3 Witch Doctor build and today's video is all about the Grin Reaper build and yes this is a very fun one so what is the Green Reaper build? well it's a poison center build focused around the uh, built around the Grin Reaper uh, helmet or ceremonial mask or voodoo mask and the tooltip here says chance to summon horrific mimics when attacking but basically what that means is it's either on hit or on cast you have a chance to basically get an extra copy of that uh, ability going. So before going any further, let's get started here with the spells real quick. You want to have Plague of Toads with Adeline Toads. It's basically going to give you some extra uh, crowd control ability. However, if you want some extra proc coefficients for the Fetish Psychopaths, since we are going to be using that as a passive, you can use uh, Reign of Toads. Either way, however, since I do have the Ren Hole Flare, I'm going to be using Adeline Toads. Next you want to have Corpse Spiders with Spider Queen and this is going to be one of the abilities that you're going to be spamming and basically you can only have one Spider Queen at a time but with the Grin Reaper helmet it basically bypasses that so you can have as many as you can spam really and these are going to be one of your biggest uh, damage dealing uh, abilities next you want to have Spirit Walk with Jaunt for, that, for those few seconds of damage and vulnerability and uh, break for crowd controls. You want to have piranhas with uh, piranhas. Another crowd control ability you get to group, group up enemies and start spamming your corpse spiders. And next you want to have acid cloud with lob blob bomb. And th these two are going to be your only mana consuming abilities. And for this uh, you really only need to cast this a few times. You're going to have a bunch of those uh, little uh, poison blobs going around, uh, blowing up. And uh, this is another big uh, damage dealing ability. And you want to have summon zombie dogs with uh, rabbit dogs. This is what I'm using since this is the poison build and I do have the tall man's finger. I'm going ahead to use this. However, you can use burning dogs if you want some AoE capabilities. Or if you're feeling squishy, since this build tends to be a little on the squishy side, you can use Life Link for damage mitigation or Leeching Beasts for life on hit. Choice is up to you. However, I would focus on the Rabbit Dogs to get that extra uh, poison damage benefit. And for passes, of course, you want to have your Fetish Cycle Pants. Pierce the Veil, increase your damage by 20%, and since we only have two mana dealing abilities, and we're only using them. Um, not as often as spy, uh, court spiders or other abilities, so we should be out, uh, a cap, a mana cap uh, most of the time. So it's not that much of a concern for the extra thirty percent mana cost. And of course, uh, Grave Injustice. You get one percent of your life and mana back for every enemy you kill within twenty yards. As well as resetting the cooldowns on on all your skills by one second for each enemy kill. And w the the only cooldowns that we really have is uh, Spirit Walk, Piranhas, and and Summon Zombie Dogs. You know, nothing that nothing critical that we need to worry about getting the cooldown up uh, quickly on. However, it's, just, it's a very good passive how you're going to get healed and you're going to get plenty of mana back. And for your final passive, the choice is pretty much up to you. I recommend Midnight Feast for that extra 50% damage increase on your on your zombie dogs. However, you can you can change it up if you want to use Gruesome Feast for the, for the extra damage. Or if you feel you need some extra survivability, you can use pier uh, uh, Spirit Vessel. Or even um, uh, Fierce Loyalty if you want to use that for whatever reason. The choice is pretty much up to you. I would focus on Midnight Feast, Gruesome Feast, or Spirit Vessel. The choice is up to you. And I have used a Vision Quest before. You are at mana cap all the time. You, you, you get your mana back pretty quickly. However, th there are better options like the... Like Midnight Feast, like I said, or Recent Feast. So let's get started with gear here. Now I am using a Ring of Glory Grandeur, however you do not need this. This is a uh, personal preference here. Just basically my twist on the build, however. If you're not going to be using this, I highly recommend a Stone of Jordan or any ring you can get poison damage onto. So of course, let's start off with the helmet. You want to have the Grim Reaper. Preferably with uh, int vit and critical hit chance, and for the socket you want to have that 23% life, the amethyst there. Mainly because we don't really need to worry about cooldowns, getting anything up to every click if we're not using um, 
big bad voodoo or fetish army so we don't need to worry about getting any spell up right away and for any other gem like the topaz the extra magic find the, that's not that great so you want to have that extra life you're going to get plenty of hp and it really helps with the toughness and preferably if you, if you can get a vit roll on the stats there on the primary stats that would be great you also want to have aug hilds for your shoulders i would go with int vit armor and summon zombie dog damage for your bracers int vit critical hit chance and poison skill damage and again if you're not using the ring of grandor you probably want to be using the aug hilds uh, chest piece and for the stats you want to have like i have here invit and summon, do uh, summon zombie dog damage for your belt you want to use a witching hour however if you don't have one i think something like a hellcat waste guard would be would be all right tasker and theo of course to increase damage against pets uh, f uh to increase the damage uh, attack speed of your pets excuse me preferably you want to have in attack speed critical hit chance and critical hit damage might roll pretty mediocre but as long as you have a task it's pretty much better than nothing tall man's finger of course if you can get one with in critical hit chance critical hit damage you know that would be great but this one's alright I have a ton of them I, I have plenty of gear in, in, in my stash so I'm always switching stuff around so everything's subject to change for your pants you want to have swampland waders this is a necessity here for the extra poison skill increase. You want to have it the and dual sockets on there. For your boots, I'm using the black thorns. And you want to have invid armor and movement speed. However, you can use the illusory boots, which is something I have them on, on a different character. Being able to run through enemies is is, is a godsend, so sometimes I'm, you tend to get um, surrounded and this is the pain. So you can use that. However, I am using the the black thorns along with the chest piece for the for the three set bonus with the ring of royal grandeur, just so I can add some extra toughness as well as damage against elites and reduce damage uh, from elites. Since I'm not using the the og hills uh, chest or the illusory boots for your weapon, I'm using a renho flare. However, any other high DPS. Uh, weapon would be good for you, the Thunder Fury or Sun Keeper it should be just fine. However this is ideal since we're gonna be using well I'm using the Plague of Toads with the Adeline Toads for the for the crowd control for the stun. And it has high DPS, this thing pretty much rolled be beautifully. For your offhand you want to use the Ucapian Serpent mainly for that 20 per uh, 20 to 30 percent 25 to 30 percent damage uh, redirecting to your summon zombie dog. And for the stats, you want to have int vit critical hit chance and summon, zo summon zombie dog damage. So with the Ucapian serpent and the tall man's finger, your your dog is going to be a lot tougher. So he's going to be able to take a lot more damage your direction. So he's not going to be dying as quickly. Now again, I am using the Ring of Royal Grandeur, but however, you can use a Stone of Jordan. I recommend or any other uh, damage uh, ring with poison damage increase on it. Now for your legendary gems, I would recommend Gokaku Swiftness mainly for that uh, swiftness buff increasing your attack speed of 1% for 4 seconds and stacking up to 15 times as well as the Pain Enhancer which you're going to gain Blood Frenzy and granting you a 3% increased attack speed for each bleeding enemy within 20 yards. Uh, mine's at level 25. So with these two your attack speed is going to start going through the roof and that's very good if you for your Adeline Toads you're going to be able to pump them out a lot faster giving you some extra uh, chance to start stunning enemies and keeping them on lockdown and for, my thir for your third one it's pretty much up to you I'm using the Enforcer to increase the damage of my pets however if you want to use a Gem of Efficacious Toxin you know that would be alright or Bane of the Trapped since we are using Adeline Toads, or if you're using Adeline Toads and Peronados, they're going to take extra damage since they're under control and pairing effects. However, if you are using the Toxin Gem, keep in mind that that poison damage over time effect is not affected by your critical hit chance, critical hit damage, or any poison damage increase. That's just a stagnant uh, dam percent damage increase at whatever level it is. So keep that in mind. 
for your paragon points. Uh, leveled here. Yeah, that's fine. I would cap out movement speed first, and then your choice is yours if you want to go into intelligence or vitality. For offense, I would focus on attack speed and then critical hit damage, uh, critical hit chance. We really don't need any cooldowns to worry about again, so it's pretty much pointless to put them into there. For defense, I suggest capping out armor first, so, so you get extra damage mitigation. And it's your choice really into life or life region. I go into life just because I like to have uh, more HP. Don't worry about resist all, and I've said this in all my other videos, the Witch Doctor is an intelligence based class. And intelligence gives you a bonus to resist all anyways. Utility. Uh, there's pretty much no nothing that I recommend that you need right away. Airy damage is kind of useless since your pets don't benefit from that, however your other spells will. Resource cost reduction. We're not using that much mana, however, if you want to put your points into there, that's fine. If you're spamming Acid Cloud a lot. And then Life on hit and then Gold Fine. So let's get into some gameplay here. Show you what this build can do. Um, where do I want to go? Where do I want to go? Northern Highlands is art. Rotation is pretty simple. Let's see if I can find a good pack here. Pets already going ham on those guys. You want to start spamming your court spiders as fast as, as soon as possible. And so you can start pumping them out. Using your random toads to, or plego toads to start getting your fetishes out. And acid cloud once you have a pretty big pack of mobs. Alright, let's see here. Oh, I got one. Oh, there's another one. of density isn't here as it used to be. I'll go to the fields of misery then since pretty pretty much packed all the time. So group them up, start spamming your spiders, acid cloud, I cast it once and you just cast it like five times in a row there. Keeping everything stunned with your rattling toads. Nobody wants to listen to that. And these elites just start dropping. This poison filled death train. Unless it gets rolling, it's not stopping. Of course, unless you get some arcane, frozen, and poison, and enchantments, and you know, all the gay lords that you can think of. Now this is a very fun build. I enjoy it very much. Have a lot of fun with it again. There are a few drawbacks. This is very good for for rifts. Pretty much get a wall of pets there, keeping them keeping all the enemies away from you. A few cons is that they tend to have a mind of their own. You no know, pets you just start going any which way direction that they choose. However, for the most part, in the recent patches, they have fixed them a little bit. They're not as derpy as they used to be.
And if you get into a very cramped rifter zone like uh, Act 3, Bastion's Keep, or any of those types of zones, or Ruins of Corvus, and all those doorways, pretty much, they get jammed up in one area and have to start attacking one by one. And if you get an elite pack in those doorways, again, if they have like arcane, their arcane and chat, those arcane beams, they're just going to start destroying them. And if you're trying to do greater rifts on this, I haven't tried. I did a 25 and I did it without that much of an issue. However, I do not know how each subsequent level is going to be. Or each level after that, I don't know how much harder it's going to be with this. However, you don't see many people in, in, in the leaderboards with this build. There's a spider infested fetish uh, train going on there. I really enjoy this build. You know, I've, st I've been starting to use a lot of the other pet builds that there are, and I'm pretty much mainly a Jade Harvest type of person. However, using all of these uh, other pet builds I've been messing around with, I'm starting to enjoy them a lot more since the Jade. I mean, I love Jade, don't get me wrong, I love one shot and stuff. However, I find the pets a lot more fun now, you know, I'm, start, I'm starting to go over to this side now. And playing my Jade character recently, I, for some reason he just seems a lot more squishy than usual. Maybe because as I'm starting to change armor around, I, but I don't know, I think, I think I'm starting to be converted here, guys, so. That's pretty much the build, guys. Let me know what you think. Like, comment, subscribe. Any questions, comments, concerns, feel free to leave a comment or message me. And I will see you guys next time.